Welcome, delicious friend. They say that fallen London is a city of a thousand stories, and they'd be right. And I am here to share those stories with you. So sit back, pour yourself a glass of Broken Giant 1844, and enjoy. Ah, welcome back. I trust you are settling into life down here just fine. Now you may recall that last week I told you that death is, for the most part, not permanent down here. However, this does not make us Neath Dwellers invulnerable. If you lose a limb or suffer some other grievous injury, it will likely never heal. Continue to amass these wounds and you will likely have only one real option, wrapping yourself in bandages and being shipped across the Untersee to the tomb colonies with the rest of the nearly dead. And as someone who has had to spend time in the tomb colonies, I would recommend avoiding them at all costs, for they are as dangerous as they are dull. After all, the nearly dead have little else to do but duel one another. Indeed, the tomb colonists themselves are exceptionally dangerous. I would advise avoiding confrontation with them, unless you happen to be a player of Knife and Candle. But as with many things, Knife and Candle is a story for another time. So to help you avoid that rather boring end to your existence, I feel it is my duty to inform you of some of the beasts and other dangers of our fair city. Though today I will be telling you only of the common Neathly beasts. Perhaps if you last down here, I will tell you of far more terrifying things that lurk in the shadows of our city. Now the first, and likely the most obvious dangerous pest you'll ever come across in fallen London is the Sorrow Spider. Sorrow Spiders are far larger than any surface arachnid, and infest our fair city at an alarming rate. Those poor folks with eye patches and glass eyes, they're likely Sorrow Spider victims, for the Sorrow Spider does not aim to kill, no, it attempts to steal away the eyes of its victims. Why? because below the Silken Chapel, Sorrow Spiders hatch from human eyeballs. They got their name from the tears their victims shed from their remaining eyes. As for how to deal with them? Hatchets and eye protection, and if your lodgings become truly infested, I would advise contacting the Department of Menace Eradication, or lighting your lodgings on fire and fleeing to the surface. Now onto the second most common pest of our city, though I find it cruel to refer to them as such. The Rattus Faber, or LBs. I doubt I need inform you as to what that stands for. These rats are known for their exceptional craftsmanship when it comes to machines. Ratwork weapons and ratwork watches are highly sought after. They are also known, however, for infesting the homes of newer Neath dwellers. If you find your home infested, don't prepare for rats as you would on the surface, no prepare for war. If, for some reason, you find yourself on Watchmaker's Hill, or decide to venture into Bugsby's marches, do watch out for the Blemigans, the purple carnivorous mushrooms from across the Z. They have a taste for flesh, and for the written word, oddly enough. Perhaps you could even find one to be your secretary or assistant, though you're far more likely to lose a finger or two to the little blighters. There are things of a far more humanoid nature to look out for as well in the city. The drownies by the docks spring to mind. Those who believe they have drowned, but haven't, what with death being impermanent and all. They're similar to the tomb colonists, only without the semblance of manners that the rest of the nearly dead carry, and with a passion for drowning the living. Sometimes they wail about their ruler, the Fathom King, who holds court somewhere across the Z in the Fathom King's hold, and who apparently married one of the legendary Lorne flukes. Fallen London is also home to many ruffians and gangs of vicious robbers, unfinished men, and far more human villains infest our city, though if you are savvy enough, most of of them can be avoided as one would avoid the surface's criminal elements. The true threat to watch out for are the vile revolutionaries and their leaders in the Calendar Council. Finally, there is of course Jack of Smiles, London's most famous murderer. Why do they call him Smiles? Because of the way he cuts up his victims, many of whom still get up, much to his annoyance. During the Neath's false winters, he is known to hide in snowmen until people pass him by, at which point he leaps out and slices them from ear to ear, though again, they usually get up. Some have claimed Jack prefers to go after those on the wanted posters, slicing up said posters as a warning to his victims in advance. Jack has been reported as a man, a woman, and even a clay man, though the truth of these claims has yet to be proven, and there are some who whisper that he is connected to the Masters of the Bazaar in some way, though I never told you that. I'm sure you understand. I hope I haven't frightened you too much, delicious friend, with this information. You must understand, I am only seeking to help you by sharing this knowledge, and I do hope we see one another again soon. But until we do, stay safe, and do watch out for Jack. <laughs>